Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. I just feel the, the anointing of God in this place tonight, amen, and I, I'm ready. I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit, maybe, but uh, I'm ready to talk to you guys about friends and foes of faith, amen, amen. First off, let's look out and pray uh, before we start and, and just get ready, into, get ready into the word of God today and what God has put in my heart to, to give to you guys today, but let's go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, we come to you in prayer right now, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for the for this this word that's about to go forth, Lord God. I pray for the anointing to cover over me, Lord God, and and to use my tongue, use my my lips, Lord God, use my mind, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would open up eyes, open up ears, Lord God, and open up hearts, Lord God, so they could receive the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we worship you tonight. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. As you as you guys know the. The uh, night series, the Wednesday, nights, the Wednesday night series is the walk of faith. And on, on your study guide, which everybody has a study guide, right? Everybody has a study guide? No one? Everybody should have a study guide. Um, it says, uh, for the summary, it says, over the next few weeks, we want to share with you the, the specific aspects of how to walk by faith and not by sight. We believe that every follower of Jesus Christ needs to embrace and hold firm to each aspect of of these lessons in order to successfully develop a walk of faith. First of all, I want to know, um, what does faith mean to you? One, two people. One, uh, what does faith mean to you? Go ahead. There you go. That's good. Right now. Another one? Anybody else? Don't be shy. I know everybody wants to be a preacher, a teacher, and I'm like, <laughs> anybody else? What does faith mean to you? Nobody? Come on, everybody's shy. Who is it? Guido, go ahead. There you go. That's good. That's really good. Amen. So uh, before this fast, uh, or during this fast, I had a, I've been, um, I'm, a, I'm a dreamer. I, I like to dream, or I, God gives me dreams or visions. And when, during this fast, uh, I was, uh, I had a dream about, uh, me in uh, this fog, and I was in this fog, and, and I was literally standing there, and how many of you guys been dr drove in a fog before, or you walked in the fog, like a really thick fog? This was really thick. I couldn't even see nothing in front of me. I couldn't even see my hand in front of me, and I remember waking up. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I wrote this down while I was uh, praying. I began to pray, and usually when I wake up in these dreams, I, I, I wake up and I just, I, I, I don't like, I get up on my knees or I get on my, uh, on my Bible and I begin to pray. And one thing that God gave me right here is, is he, I wrote it down on my iPad here. It says, when we drive or walk in the thick of fog, we don't know what's ahead of us, but we pursue on to get to our destination. We go by what we can't see, hoping and praying that we made the right step or the right move. We can't, see it. we can't see what's ahead of us till we get there. See, this is what I, a faith that I want. I, I want a faith like that, relying on God to guide me, not caring about the thick fog that's around me and saying, okay, God, I trust in you. Lead me and I will follow. I don't need to know what's ahead of, my, what's ahead of me. My future is in your hands. All I need is for you to guide me and I will trust you. I want a faith that, like that, not knowing what's next. Surprise me, God. See, that's what faith means to me. Just walking by faith. Not, no, not caring what's, what's next. Some people like to know what's next. Like, how many of you guys watch a movie you want to know what's next already? You fast forward it or you like, man, I want to I I get to the end, you know? No, I, I, wanna, I, I just want to live by, by faith, day by day. I want to live by, by the edge of my seat, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. And not knowing what's going to happen in my future. But letting God take control. I gave you control, God. Say, I give you control, God. Your plans are my plans. This is what I wrote in my, in my, in my, in my notes. It says, your, your, your plans are my plans. This is what I prayed. You told me, God, to trust in you, and I took a leap of faith. Your plan has always been perfect. I just had to play my part. You always wanted to use me. I just had to let you start. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So today we're talking about friends and foes of faith. And right here, the first in your study guide says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. 
2 Corinthians 5, 7. See, the foe, the foe is a thick fog that we can't see. What we can't see is it's our foe, what we can't see. And we're going to talk about some foes uh, that get, away, get in the way of our faith, some foes that get in the way of our faith. Amen? First off, what is a, what is a foe? What is a foe? Uh, I looked it up in the dictionary, uh, Webster's Dictionary. It says a personal enemy or opponent. Foe means a personal enemy or opponent. These are the foes, the thick fog we must get past in order to have true faith. Here's one of the uh, foes that are getting in the way of our, of our faith. Number one is doubts. That's in your study guide. Your first blank on your, th- on your study guide is doubts. Doubts. Uh, if you could all go to uh, Luke 5, 4 through 6. When we're uh, in this fast, uh, Pastor gave, it, gave, us, uh, gave me this, uh, this, uh, this topic, and I was like, God, I, I was going to ask Pastor, I'm like, Pastor, you lead me, you tell me what you want me to talk about. But I was like, no, God, I'm going to do it how you want me to do I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to seek you, God. And we were doing the fast. And we, me and my wife, we watched a lot of uh, Bible stories. And a lot of it was Jesus, the birth of Jesus, the disciples. Uh, we watched uh, a lot of different things. And, and one of the things that came upon me was, was this story. And, and in Luke 4, uh, 5, 4 through 6, and it says, uh, Okay, so when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Amen. So this is uh, some doubt. Peter has some doubts about putting the net to catch the fish. If you notice uh, on verse, verse 5, it says, Master, we have toiled all night. That's, that's telling me, like, we really tried it, God. We tried it, God. We tried it our way, but okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and trust you. I'm going to put this net down, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and do this. And what, they, what happened? They caught a great number of fish to the net was breaking. Amen? Peter has some doubts about putting the net to catch fish, but ultimately put his trust in Jesus and what his faith got him was more than what he imagined. We need to leave our doubt behind in order for things that, that God had promised us to go in effect. See, God has promised us many things, but doubt has been our enemy. Amen. Um, today, God, you know, the devil is putting doubt on my mind today, uh, this morning. And I was going through my, my you know, that before this, before today, I was like, got this. You know, I wrote my letter, I wrote my, I got my worksheet done, I got my PowerPoint done, I got my, all that done. But I was like, then this morning, I was, I was going through my, 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 my notes on my iPad, and I was like, God, I don't know if I could do this. You know, I, I'm usually talking to the young people, and I, I, so God told me today to be myself. Don't be, don't be like trying to be uh, someone else, like a good, you know, just be yourself. Talk the way you, you're supposed to talk. This is what I, I gave you, this talent. Amen. Even before this, uh, a lot of people don't, a lot of my youth know this. I, I was not a, a, a good speaker in, in high school and, and some in college. I stuttered a lot. I used to stutter a lot in high school. I used to get teased for. And I, so I, saw, I always said, I'm not going to be a, a, a speaker. I'm never going to go up and speak. You know, when, you know, in high school, you would do, uh, you would do those um, you know, speeches or, you know, something, to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to they could grade you on. And I, I was, I, I was, did not do good with it at all. And I would get nervous and all this stuff. But looking back now, God already prepared me. God already prepared me for this. I never knew that I was going to do this. I always said in my mind, I'm not going to do that. No. I'll be behind, you know, working with the Spanish ministry. I was always behind the scenes. And, you know, Pastor knows that I was always behind the scenes, doing the sound, playing music, whatever, but never the one that was up front. And God already put me through a different, different, uh, how you say, a different, uh, not trial. It's more like a, like, this is what you need to do now for me, son. And this is what I'm going to use you in. Amen. 
Uh, right here it says, uh, Matthew 8, 26, you have little faith. Jesus replied, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and sea, and it was perfectly fine. Amen. How many of you guys, well, all of us should know the, the, the story of David, right? See, we need to be like David, with no doubt, slaying the enemy. See, David was just a young boy. He had that childlike faith. He slew the giants. He did it with confidence and faith, knowing that his God was more powerful than any foe. He had no doubt on his mind. He, he had no doubt on his mind that he could slay the enemy. See, people like Saul like, laughed at him. His brothers laughed at him. Oh, you're just a little kid. And I, I believe he probably did have some doubt on his mind. But when the enemy began to mock his God, when the enemy began to say, your God can't do nothing. I'm bigger than your God. Then he got offended. He'd be like, man, no one talks to me, to me uh, to talk to God about that, like that. How many of you guys have an uh, older brother or younger sister, a uh, brother, right? I'm the oldest out of them. And me, me and my, my brothers, we, we don't never see I die. But if you come up against my brother, if you come against my sister, I'm the first one. I'm the first one. I, I, you don't talk to, you know, I, I, I'm the only one that can talk to him like that, and I'll play. <laughs> but I, I believe that's how we need to be about doubt. We need to tell the devil, you know what, I don't, I don't need no doubt in my mind. Amen. He probably had doubt also, but when the giant mocked his God, all doubt left his mind. See, when we come to God with an adult, all grown up faith, you no longer trust in God. See, adults, we think we know too much. We know everything, right? We think too much. Us as adults have to see to believe. Over the, um, this Christmas, uh, before Christmas, a little before Christmas, I met this young man at work, and I, I, be I believe it was a predestined appointment. How many of you guys had that predestined appointment before? Right? I believe it was a predestined appointment because I was just working and, and, and I, was, I was studying for something. I forgot what I was studying for, another preaching somewhere. I forgot what it was. And uh, this guy comes up to me, gives me a card, and says, hey, I want to give you this. I, I read it. He says, you know about Jesus? I said, yeah, I know about Jesus. He says, well, I found evidence of his blood. I found his blood. And I, I, I did not want to laugh. I did not want to do anything. I was like, this guy's crazy. He found his blood. Like he said, he found, it, he found his blood in a vial. And he went to the cross where, I guess where, he, something, I don't forgot what it was. But it was something where, uh, where the cross was. They found blood where the cross was. And they, they took it and they, they found the DNA of Jesus. And I was like, wow. And he says, see, now people, more people could believe. I said, well, you don't need, to, you don't need that. You know what? I don't, I don't need it to believe. Uh, I don't need to find, you know, the, 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 the flesh of Jesus, you know, to, in order to believe. <laughs> All I need is that faith. So I don't need that. See, that's adult thinking. That's adult thinking. We need to, we need to believe. Oh, I need to find evidence. I need to see pictures, you know. I, I, need, I, need, I need to find some evidence. I don't need that. I need, I, need, I need to have that faith in him. Amen. Number two. Number two is man. Foes that get in the way of our faith is man. Psalms 118.8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Sometimes we put too much faith in man. We rely too much on man when we should be relying on God. See, man is going to let us down. Man is going to, going to fail us each and every time. You know, um, God's been speaking to me a lot about this. And, and uh, I used to always go to my dad for everything. Pray for me, dad. I need this, dad. I need a job. Help me, dad. Do this and this and that. And he taught me something really good. And my mom, too. That we need to pray on our own. 
I, you know, I never, dad, dad, never, I never went to dad for money. You know, a uh, pastor was telling me, I just, we just got, I just bought a new car. And a uh, pastor said, well, you, you, your dad could help you with the, get some money. I said, my dad never gave me money for, like, not even, you know, $5 maybe, you know, whatever. But no thousands of dollars, you know. See, we need to work for our own. Amen. So we need to stop tr- relying on man. Stop. We know it's good to ask for, for a pastor or uh, myself or my dad or somebody for prayer. Dr. Gill, you know, for prayer is good. But if you're not praying yourself, if you're not at the altar yourself, if you're not the one that's, that's, that's seeking God, oh, not, not having that faith where like, oh, God, pastor got me. He's praying for me. I don't need to pray. Pastor, he, he's, he's praying for me. No, we don't need that. You need to be at, the, at that prayer. And it's good to, for all of us to pray. It's good to, to, for us to pray for your situation. But if you're not praying yourself, how's your faith going gonna, gonna to get in action? See? Yeah, that's good. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Amen? See, we put too much faith or trust in our team, like a football team. But we put no trust in God. You know, we just watched the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> it was funny. Me, me and Damari, I was, uh, I was voting for the Eagles. Damari was voting for the, for the uh, Patriots. And, 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 and I was like, you know, whoever wins, whoever wins, right? But, but people put their trust in, our, in the team rather than God. Amen? And we need, we need to put trust in God. Our faith shouldn't be by what everyone is telling us but by actually seeing and touching Jesus for ourselves. See, Thomas, everybody called Thomas Doubting Thomas. See, Thomas wanted to touch, he wanted to see Jesus for himself. He didn't want to live on a secondhand evidence. He didn't want to believe, he wanted to touch him himself. In order for, to experience Jesus, we need to experience him for ourselves. We can't go by another man's faith. We can't go by our mama's faith. We can't go by our uncle's faith. We can't go by anybody else's faith, but God's, our own faith. We need a a first-hand encounter with God. To have true faith, we, we first need a real relationship with God. See, our mama's relationship with God isn't going to save us. We need to have our own Faith, you know, I believe uh, when I was younger, I, I was I was a troubled teen. I didn't do too too much, and Dr. Gale's laughing because he knew so he was my youth pastor uh, before. But I, you know, I used to believe me, my, my mom prays for me, my dad prays for me, and that's it. And I'm going to heaven because my mom and dad pray for me. Now we we need to go to heaven on our own. We need to make, get in our own self. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Put confidence in God. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Number three is fear. 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 Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew 14, 25 to 30. Once you got it, you say amen. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was bolsterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Amen. I remember uh, years ago when I was in youth group and Dr. Gale took us to, uh, to Great America. It was the first time I ever went. I'd never been on a I've never been on a, on a roller coaster. I've never been 
on uh, any of those stuff. I've never been to an amusement park ever. And it was the first time I was 16, maybe 14, 15, 16 years old. And first time ever, and I, I, I went because I wanted to go, okay? And I, I'm, I was afraid of heights, and now I overcome that, thank God. But I was afraid of heights, and uh, I said, no, I'm not going to go any ride. You know, I'm just going to hang out, play some games, and that's it. So here comes Ginger. You know Ginger, right? Here comes Ginger. And she comes running. She goes, you got to go on a ride. You went, paid all this money. You got to go on a ride. And I said, no, I'm not going on any ride. No, that's it. No, I'm not going on any ride. She says, at least go on the small one. Small one ended up being too long. We're like, no, you can't go on this one. Says, We're almost going to leave. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going on any ride. No, she says, you got to go. So she pulls me to over there to the, bit, to the biggest ride out there. I forgot what it was. And I was like, okay, all right, okay, I, got, I trust you. And I went there, and we got on the ride. And we got on the ride. Well, you know, once I got to the, like, I was okay at the back of the line. I was like, yeah, I got this, right? And when I get to the front of the line, I'm like, no, I, I, no, I can't do this. So we get there, and we get in the, in the, in the, in the it's one of the ones that dangle, you dangle your feet. I was the worst one to get on in the first place. And I'm dangling my feet on there, and I'm like, God, help me. Help me. I look over there to, uh, to Ginger, and, I, and Ginger's, like, crying, too, and playing. I was like, is this your first ride? She said, yeah, it's my first ride, too. <laughs> I picked the wrong person to go into the ride with. And I was in fear. I was like, Ginger, I'm going to kill you when I get off this ride if I come out alive. You know, and, and, and I came, overcame my fears, you know, and, and through that, and, and we both w we went through that and everything, and, and I, I, my wife, she loves those rides. You know, she's, you know. I get on, I get on those rides with her, she's laughing the whole way. It's like she's laughing like a, like a, like a, like a, like a little kid. And I'm like, man, I'm over here dying over here, you're laughing. But I overcame my fear. And, and I put I put trust in, 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 in man, you know, Ginger, so first one. That was my first mistake and to this day we talk about it too. I think last time we talked about it too. Um so in your on your worksheet it says the first mistake Peter made was that he first doubted Jesus. He first Doubted Jesus. The second one is, the second mistake Peter made was that he lost trust in Jesus. Peter put his eyes on God, but when he looked down, he began to fear and drown. Peter's problem was that he lost sight of the one who walked on water. He lost sight of the one who made the water. The one who controlled the storm. Because of his fear. Some of us, when storms come, we go back to our fears and lose sight of the one who can take us out of the storm. We got to fear the one who stopped the storm rather than the storm. Amen. We got we to gotta, we gotta put our trust in the one who made the water. Amen. In Psalms 56, 11, the psalmist writes, In God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? Nothing, because I got to put my, my trust in God. I'm not going to be afraid. See, this is an awesome testimony to the power of trusting in God. Regardless of what happens, we will trust in God because we know and understand the power of God. The key to overcoming fear, then, is total and complete trust in God. Trusting in God is a refusal. Trusting God is a refusal to give in to fear. It is turning to God even in the darkest times and trusting him to make the things right. This trust comes from knowing God and knowing that he is good. We won't be able to experience this trust if we don't know him personally. Many Christians do not fulfill the calling they have on their life because of fear. I can't. A lot of people say, I can't. See, I, I, I used to think that way. You know, I was, I was bullied at, at school. I was, I was the outcast. I was the one that, that I had a calling in my life. But I went to God and I said, I can't do this, God. First of all, I, I stutter. 
First of all, I, I, I'm not smart. First of all, I get bullied every day. And, and, and I'm not living for you right now, God. And that was when, not now, but, you know, when I was a teenager, right? You're like, pastor's over here trying to tackle me down over here. Um, but, you know, I, I, I put, I began to put my trust back in God. Amen. Amen. We need to step out of our fears. When he leads us to do something new or different, we need to just trust in him and go forward. He will always be with you in the midst of all your fears. We need to get uncomfortable in order for us to grow. So imagine an 18-year-old, okay, about to, should be about to graduate high school, still in eighth grade, saying, I can't go beyond the eighth grade because of my fear of high school. How is that person going to grow? Is that person going to grow mentally? Is that person going to grow spiritually? Is that person going to grow, get a job? Come on. See, that's the thing with our fears. We need to overcome them in order for us to grow spiritually. We don't want to stay the same, at the same place. Some of us are still eating baby food. How many of you guys like baby food? Okay, I, I don't like baby food. My, even my daughter, she's a one and a half. She doesn't like baby food no more. Okay, she wants the real stuff. She wants the real food. You know, she gets mad every time I give her, like, you know, baby food. Me and my, my son will be eating sandwiches, and she wants that. She wants juice. She wants, she wants meat. She wants chicken. She wants everything because she, she's growing. And that's how it's supposed to be, right? She's not supposed to be eating baby food the, the rest of her life. And that's how us as Christians, we should, be, we should be living like that. We should be living where we want to get more spiritually, get more. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of us are still eating baby food and still crawling because of our fears are making us stay that way. See, fear just cripples us. We cannot work in fear. We cannot work in fear. Some of us are old to the faith. I'm not saying you're old, okay? I'm just saying you've been in this for a while. I'm just saying you've been here for a while, and, and it's time for you to grow up. See, we got to stop listening to our fears. How many of you guys laugh at, our, at your fears? That's what I do. I, I laugh at my fears. You know, when I was uh, coming today, and, and I was, I kind of, Fearful a little bit. Um, I don't know why, but that was the devil, you know, working. And I said, you know what, God? I got this. I'm doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four is sin. Number four is sin. Foes that get in the way, in the way of our faith is sin. Mark 2, 1 through 5. Immediately... Many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. So, I'm, yeah, I'm starting in verse uh, 2, actually. Mark 2, verse 2 through 5. Immediately, many gathered together so that there were no longer room to receive them, not even the, near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, paralytic who was carried by four men, and when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they cut, uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus, and when G, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. See, before Jesus healed that, the man that came down from the roof, he said, Your sins are forgiven. Sometimes our healing hasn't taken place. Sometimes our financial blessings hasn't taken place. Sometimes our, our family member hasn't, taken, uh, hasn't been saved because of our sin. Because we haven't asked God for forgiveness. We want our healing. We want our financial blessing. But we haven't asked for forgiveness. See, have you been faithful to God? Or are you, are you in and out of church? See, sometimes... We want to see results, but we're not faithful. We're, we're still stuck in sin. See, um, 
I was uh, listening to my dad on, on Sunday night. Actually, it was during the Spanish service, actually, a little bit. He said it, too, and, and he was saying that, um, you know, a lot, a lot of us want to see our, our families, like, healed and, and, and uh, saved and everything. And we want them healing in their body, or you want them to get a job, and we want them to, to, to do good, right? But we should be praying for them to get, to, to, to get saved, to get forgiven. All that will come after. All that will come after. You know, you know I pray d- daily for my loved ones that are not saved. But I don't pray that they, they get a job and, and, and they never come to church. I pray that they get a job, but then they'll get saved in Jesus' name. Because, man, what, what is it if you get a job and you're not saved? What is it if you get healed and, oh, yeah, you get healing and that's it, and then you go back in the world and you sin some more? What is it if, 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 if a financial blessing comes to you and you spend it on worldly things? See, a lot of us, you know, when I was younger, I, I, I'm going to win the lotto, right? I'm going to win the lotto. I'm going I'm to buy my house. I'm going to finally get out of my mom and dad's house. I'm not thinking back then, you know, I'm, I'm out of my mom and dad's house now. But uh, my thinking back then, I'm going to win the lotto, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy my own car, you know, and I'm going to do this and this and that. But th- that was like worldly things. See, I'd rather not win the lotto. And I, we don't, I don't play the lotto, you know. But uh, I'd rather not win that. And, and, and be saved. I'd rather not get, get, get a financial blessing and, and, be, and not be saved. I'd rather be saved than have money, the whole the world, money in the world. <laughs> See, sin cripples us, cripples our faith. It blinds us. As long as you are in, in friend terms with sin, you will never accomplish what God wants you to do. See, some of us are still playing, having friendship, having tea parties, you know? Having Lego parties. You know, me and my son have Legos. We play Legos all the time now. You know, with, with sin. And we wonder why our faith has been low or been down. Why haven't we got healed? Why haven't we got a financial blessing? It's because sin is still in our lives. Amen? How, how many are still with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number five is ourselves. Ourselves. Number five. For if a man think, Galatians 6, 3 says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. See, a lot of us, I, you know, I'm macho. I, I you know, I, I was a, I was a, uh, I was the best marble player in, in, in high school. Yeah, that was me, right? I used to play marbles, you know? Marbles, I never played Jack. I played marbles, though. You know, they think there's something, you know? I could have been like, Pastor, you know, I, I'm the best preacher here. You know, you need to, you need to pay, start paying me more, you know? You got to start paying me at all, you know? You know, I'm this and that. I'm the best, you know, putting all on ourselves. So imagine if David put his faith in himself and did it his way. Imagine what would the outcome be. David would have been dead. He goes on by himself. He says, I got this. Little guy, big old guy. He would have been dead. That, that, little, that, that brother, the giant. We would have just picked him up, flew him over, and that's it. Where would David be? You know? The lineage of, uh, of Jesus would not even be, you know, David would have been gone. So, we need to stop thinking about ourselves and, and being all about ourselves. We need to be in it for God, not for ourselves. God gets the glory. We need to be servants. See, the disciples' faith only worked because they had a servant's heart. They wanted to serve people. They were not in it for themselves. They were servants. Amen. Let's go to Matthew. Uh, you can write this on your notes. I didn't put this on the notes here, but Matthew 17, 19 to 21. 
The disciples, the, oh, sorry, say, uh, you got it, say amen. I wrote it on my, my notes, so I have it a little faster. Um, 19, Matthew 17, 19 through 21. The, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why, why could we not cast it out? Talking about a devil, a demon. So Jesus said to them, because of, you, of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. See, some of us, some say that are, they are called, but don't want to pray and fast. Some say that are called, but don't want to obey the pastor. Some say they, they're called and they're chosen, but they don't want to be servants. This means they are, they are in it for themselves, and they're not called, and they're working in their flesh. See, we need to stop working in, our, in, in the flesh. You know, when I came uh, to here, I, I, Pastor, you know, I told Pastor, I could do whatever you want me to do, Pastor. I, I, don't, I don't have to be, you know, uh, the main speaker. I don't need it. I, I could clean the toilets. I could, I could clean the outside. I could do the lawn. I could do this because I wanted to be a servant. Because I'm not in it for myself. What's God going to say to you when, he, when you get to heaven? And, and you're, you're in it for yourself, working in your flesh. He's, gonna, he's just going to tell you what? I don't even know you. You did not do it for me. You did it for yourself. See, we need to work with God. We cannot do it without him. Amen? Amen? So we need to do it for God. Amen? If you want to be, you, wanna, you, you, you feel like you're called, you need to start by praying and fasting. See, when, when, uh, when Pastor Delgado came up with a fast, and I was talking to Mikey before then, I was like, Mikey, tell him, no, don't do Daniel fast. I was like, I literally told him, I'm sorry, I did, I did. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it out there, I did. Uh, I struggled with that. I, I, there were days I did not eat at all, like at all, for the Daniel Fast. During the Daniel Fast, I did not eat. All I ate was a banana, that's it, a day. I'm really picky. You know, ask my wife, she'll, she'll tell you, my mom, I'm telling you, my dad even knows, yeah, I'm picky. And, and um, but during this fast, I, I, was, I was saying, man, Pastor, why'd you do it this way? Could we just, like, do all day, every day, you know, five to five, you know? But I wasn't, I was like, you know what? No, no, God, I, I'm going to do it what Pastor told us to do. Because I'm a servant. You know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a servant here, and, and I'm going to obey Pastor and what he wants me to do. I could have said, oh, I'm going to do, I don't care. I'm not gonna, no one has to know I'm doing five to five every day. No, but I did it how pastor told us to do it because obeying the man of God is like obeying past, uh, God. Amen? I, I don't know. I don't want to get outside of God's will and, and in his favor. And, and, and plus it was be my conscience all the time too. Like hopefully someone's not seeing me at, at Red Lobster after five, you know. You know, but it, it, it's true. I, I wanted to be in the will of God. Amen. Moving on, let's go to uh, uh, friends. Friends that are crucial to keeping our faith. What is a friend? I, 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 was the, I looked a lot of dictionaries, and this was the best one that I found, uh, a definition for a friend. A person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond. A person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond. Someone you know. Someone that you have a bond with. So these are some th friends that are crucial to keeping our faith. Number one is, um, number one is trust. Trust. We just had the scripture last month during the fast. Was it last month? Yeah, January. Uh, during the fast. And it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not into your own understanding in all thy ways and acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord. Not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him, and God will direct your paths. How many of you guys lost trust in something or someone? Raise your hand. 
something. It could be like something too, you know. You know. Lost trust or something, or someone. Maybe you have lost trust in God. Don't raise your hand. I don't. Maybe things didn't turn out the way you wanted it. See, I, I learned to trust in God in you know, whatever situation I'm in. No matter bad or good, because I'm trusting that he is, has a plan for all this. I don't, know, I don't need to know his plan. I don't need to say, God, give me, give me a, a, a map to where you are taking me. Because God doesn't give me a map. I tell this to young people all the time. God doesn't tell you, hey, okay, give your parents, okay, this is for Matthew. He, here's his plan. You guys stick to this plan. Go through this map. If you guys get off the map, come back. Make sure you come back, right? Like Google Maps, right? It's not like that. God doesn't give you Google Maps for life. Imagine if he did. I mean, I was, man, I would have been all messed up. I would have been off the, it would be like, uh, what do they call it? Re rerouting, 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 rerouting. <laughs> rerouting. I would have been half so much reroutings, man. But that's, that's good, though. God reroutes us to where he wants us to go. We might be got off the path a little bit. But all we do is trust in God to pat us back. I wrote this as a, uh, when I was praying. I said, all I need is to, uh, to say, direct me and I'll follow you. It looks scary sometimes, but God, your, your will, not mine. See, Jesus followed the plan by dying on the cross. See, imagine if God didn't, uh, Jesus didn't uh, die on the cross. He didn't follow the plan. Where would, we be? Where, would we be? Where would we be at right now? Still living in sin. We won't have hope. We won't have that faith. We won't have that, that strength. Yesterday I was with a sister from my wife. At, I think it's Ojeda. What's this? I, went to, I went to the Godina, and then I went to Ojeda too. And uh, so Ojeda, I went in there. I went to her room, and she was crying. And she was... She was crying and, and she was in pain and, and I was I was like, Man, this is a good time to come. And me and my wife began to talk to her and and, and read scriptures to her and pray with her. And and, and just put she said, I, I don't know if I have any faith anymore. She says, I, I'm I'm depressed. I, I don't feel like living anymore. And uh, we pray with her. We, 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 we read some scriptures about trusting in God. And when we began to pray with her, we began to pray over her body, pray over her, her back. She, she broke her back. Um, and, and we began to pray for her. And, and that I felt the peace of God come in that place. Even the, the lady next to us, there's another lady, because there's a, there's a room, there's two people in that room. And the other lady says, thank you for praying for us. And we weren't even praying for her. We, we could have wanted to pray for her. We weren't really praying for her. You know, it was kind of like, like you know, the, the curtain goes down, which we didn't really see her. And she said, thank you for praying for us. And I felt that if she began to calm down, if she began to feel a lot better, you know, and, and because God went in there and she began to trust in God again. Amen. That's what we need to trust in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Number two is obedience. Obedience. There is going to be times when we don't want to follow God's will. But I'm telling you today to obey and God will pour out blessings. Our situations are going to change the prayers we've been praying for. And our prayers will get answered. Amen. Obedience. Obeying God. You know, when I began to come back to God um, before I got married, I got married, and, um, you know, I, I went to, uh, I, I forgot what, it was a service, a youth service, and I, I came back to God, and and um, I don't remember what the youth service was about. All I remember is coming to the altar and crying. Right? How many of you guys been to those services where you don't remember what the preacher is talking about? And you're like, I remember is that, you know, I got the Holy Ghost. I was just crying at the altar. You know, and that's how it was. I, I went to the altar and I started crying. And that's where I became 
back to God. And, th- and then God told me, you know what? You need to obey me. This is what you need to do. You know, I used to listen to uh, worldly music. I told this youth all the time, laugh at me, but I would listen to Hillsong and then I'll listen to Jay-Z and the next song will be Jay-Z and Tupac and all this different stuff, right? And that's how I was. I was Christian, not Christian. Christian, not Christian. That's how I was. And, and uh, at that point, I was, I was praying and I was praying for, uh, I went through some relationships and stuff like that. So I had to get rid of some relationships then, um, uh, get rid of some, um, some girls, not, not, not women, some girls, to find the woman. And I began to pray to God and I, I said, God, bring me someone that's going to help me. And I began to obey God. Yeah, shout out just to my wife, yes. And she helped me. So, amen. Been married for, this is going to be eight years now. Eight years. Amen. And so um, she began to help me. I, I asked for God for someone to help, to help me. Help me, right? And so one day, uh, I had trouble obeying God. I had trouble obeying God. And God told me to delete those music. Delete the videos. Delete everything. I would, I would download music videos. Back then, we used to download stuff like on everything. So we'd download music videos. I would, and so one day, she, we were hanging out um, at my house, my, my parents' house. And she went on my computer. I went somewhere, and she started deleting all my music. And I was like, no, man. It's, I don't know if it's going to work, you know? First of all, you don't touch my stuff. But God used her to get rid of that stuff. You know, um, after a while, I went to my friend's house about a month later, and I, he listens to that music. And I, I said, I'm going to go download that music. I don't tell my girlfriend, you know? So I downloaded it again. And the next thing you know, I'm telling you, it's, it's God. My laptop um, I did, uh, crashed. Crash. He said, I, you know what? I, I gave you a chance. God said, I gave you a chance. And you did it again. I'm going I'm to go ahead and, 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 and make sure you just get rid of it all the way. And so I obey God. And that's what, that's what we need to do. We need to get, obey God. And even though it's, you don't want to, your flesh doesn't want to, just obey him. Obey our pastor too, our leaders. You know, sometimes it, you know, sometimes it is not what, uh, what, what uh, you, we want to hear. Sometimes it's not what we want to hear. But we need to obey them because God, God's going to work in that. We need to listen. Uh, number three, let's go number three. Patience. Patience. Number three is patience. Let's go to James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the test in your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. I like that. Lacking nothing. That means you, 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 there's nothing that you lack. Let patience, in verse 4, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. This is one thing I've been, I struggle with. I, I struggle with patience. I'm not really patient. Like, I'm really not patient. Uh, you know, I'm the person, my mom and dad know, I'm the person that it, it, I want it, I want it now, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to get it now. And I used to spend my credit card when I was younger just buying play PS3, PS2, all these different things, and you know, and, and, and God is, you know, through my kids. Now, you know, you have to have patience with kids. My two, you know, they're, they're a handful. Both of them together. One of them by themselves is fine. But both of them together, man. I'm praying for patience every, every time I take, you know, we, we were together. And, and God, God, God's been working through my patience. And so when we have faith, we need to have that patience. And sometimes it's not, not going to come. All, all at once. It's not going to come until forever, for a long, long time. Because sometimes 
for me, I, I want it now. Like, now, I want it now. But God is, is preparing us to get it later. Maybe you're not ready for it now. Maybe, maybe you, you, what you've been praying for and you're having faith for, you're not ready for it. You're not mature enough for it yet. See, when, um, you know, back to my wife, we, we, uh, I prayed um, for a godly woman. I prayed for um, a woman that would, would be on her knees praying to God and, and, and be on our knees, a prayer warrior, a, a person that, that's going to uh, not live and uh, not go to church and, 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 be, and be something else in the world outside of church. And I remember one day, uh, brother, um, I prayed. I, when I pray, I pray for civics. You know, a lot of you know my story in Damari knows. I, I, prayed for, I prayed for a Mexican woman. I prayed for uh, a good cook. I prayed for, you know, all this stuff. She has to have long hair. She has all this. I prayed for all of the different things, too. And, uh, but I prayed for that. And I remember one day, um, um, Pastor uh, Ocovio, you know, Pastor, Brother Ocovio, he came to preach one of our Spanish um, min, uh, services. And I, I was a music minister, or I was playing music and, and piano. And, and I remember I prayed that prayer during that week he was there. And because uh, he was talking about something about that, I remember. And then uh, I prayed for it, and he comes to me, and he goes, and, and, and he knew that, you know, he knew I had something in my mind. So he comes to me, and he says, you know, um, he comes to me outside of the mic, and I was playing music, and it was at the end of the service, and he says, you know, what you've been praying for, that woman that, that, woman that you've been praying for, that helped me that you've been praying for, she's here. Now just start worshiping. And that's when, when my, <laughs> when everything broke loose and God would need to work in me. And I, you know, I tell the, the guys, I'm like, where's she at though? You know, I'm looking at the crowd like, where's she at? She says, she's here, where? You know, never knew. And she, she was there in my life already. She, we were friends. Uh, we're not boyfriend, girlfriend yet. We're friends. And, uh, and never knew that, that was, it was her. And, but God, God, God gave me patience through that. Sometimes we need to we need to work on our patience. You know, I, I, I tell, if, we, if you see me not being patient, help me. Okay, pray for me. So I'm not patient, but we need to work in that. Last thing I want to talk about is uh, we need to exercise their faith, just like the disciples did. They exercised their faith each and every day, and, and they became friends with trust. They became friends with obedience. They became fr friends with patience. And there's a lot more to it. And this, this is what God gave me. There's a lot more that they, they became friends with. And, but these are the three that God told me to talk to you guys about. But they became friends with this. See, I'm not telling you that disciples were perfect. Disciples were not perfect. They were not the perfect church. We're not the perfect church. Okay? If you, if you came to this church thinking this is the perfect church, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news. But we're not. See, we're still working. The only perfect church is going to be in heaven. Where everything's perfect. Gold, everything's gold, made of gold. Everything's it's going to be, all we're going to do in heaven is going to, going to go worship God. But it's through our faith that, that we need to exercise each and every day in order to get there. See, the angel Gabriel is, is already ready to blow his, to blow his horn. You know, God is ready to get, getting it all set up. God, all, all God has to do is, is, uh, is say the word, and, it, and he's going to blow that, that, that horn. Right? So, let's all stand today, amen. Amen. And what I want to do is, is today I want you guys to, to pray with me. And let's pray that, God, that we exercise our faith each and every day. Each and every day. If we need help with trusting in God, if you need help in obeying, in obeying God and, and having patience with God, be, make that your prayer to where I, I, need, I need patience, God. I need, a, I need to, uh, to learn how to obey God. I need to learn how to trust in you, God. 
I don't need doubt. I don't need, uh, you know, uh, sin in my life. I don't need man in, to, 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 uh, to, to, to look into man. I don't need fear in my life, but I, I just need to trust in you, God. Let's make that your prayer tonight. Lord God, I pray to you right now. Lord God, Lord God I pray for this church. Lord God, I pray for each and every one, uh, everyone here, Lord God. Man and, and, ch- and women, Lord God. Young men and, then ch- and child, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God. Lord God, that we will be able to exercise our faith, Lord God. Each and every day. Give us patience, Lord God. Give us trust in you, Lord God. Give us obedience, Lord God. Lord God, that, Lord God, we will be able to withstand the walls of the enemy, Lord God. When the doubt comes in, Lord God, we will be able to quote the scripture, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lead not to all into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths i worship you tonight lord god the name of jesus oh god you're worthy god the name of jesus oh god hallelujah jesus oh god lord i i challenge you guys today to walk in faith each and every day walk in it and God's going to do something great. God's already doing something great in this church. If you haven't noticed, every Sunday, man, it's been like almost like a revival service. And that's every time we come into this, this place. If you have doubt in your mind, begin to come to this altar and worship God. If you have, if you have sin in your life, come on. Begin to come into this altar and worship God. Don't let it hold you back. Don't let it paralyze you, cripple, your, cripple you. Because I, I want to see a faith that works like never before. I believe it could be better, uh, not better, but we could be just like the Azusa Street. We could be even more bigger than that because God is already preparing it. In the name of Jesus. Pastor. And let's give Matt a hand for what he's doing here at Anointing. Praise God. Good job, Matt. I just want to pray over us tonight that God would take us into the, the realm of faith, of walking by faith and not by what we see, that we would understand that he has a plan and design for every single person that we come in contact with. I'm telling you that if you'll allow faith, he doesn't respond to your need or to your, your situations, but he does respond to faith. And wherever he sees faith, the Holy Ghost just kind of gravitates toward that. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let our faith begin to rise at a different level, Lord. And let it build, Lord God, all through this month. Let it build. Let, let us come with expectation, God, that you're going to impart something. Let us hear something. Let us grab something that's going to change the way we view ourselves, other people, and even you. We ask in the name of Jesus that God, you'll rise us to new levels, Lord God, internally, Lord, that would be external in its use and in, in, in the way that we operate. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to dispel doubt and unbelief and fear and all things, Lord, that we put our trust in that will only bring us self-gratification. In the name of Jesus, allow us to grab things that are eternal that will change, Lord, not only us, but everyone around us. Lord, let us burn that we might be able to allow others to come and see you uh, and let us burn and it will draw them to you. We thank you. God, we honor you, Lord. Uh, Let it be residual effect that goes down not only to us, but to our children and to our children's children and Lord, to our whole lineage in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. That's it. Go ahead and put your hands together in this place here tonight and praise the name of Jesus and give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You don't want to miss this Sunday. We're going to have a great speaker this Sunday, Brother Tess Stewart, evangelist Tess Stewart. And uh, you probably, some of you that heard him before, you know how powerful a message he will bring. He'll bring a great message this weekend. And we're going to have God uh, see what he's going to do. Amen. God bless you.